Update after date night, Friday night was our date night. Early signs were troubling. The babysitter called me at the last minute to cancel due to illness, even though the wife had set up the times. I called the wife to let her know and she was disappointed, of course, so we scrambled, made some quick calls, and found another sitter on short notice. Our girls knew we were going out for a date and they insisted I dress nicely, so I changed out of my work clothes and put on nice dress slack and a burgundy sweater that I know my wife likes. When she came home from work to pick me up, she gave me a big, long hug and thanked me for agreeing to go out. She thought I was going to decline due to the 180 I've been implementing as we stepped apart from the hug with our arms still extended, she paused for a moment and looked deep into my eyes. Our gaze locked and a spark of connection happened. It was just a fleeting moment in time, but she moved in to kiss me. I kissed her back more firmly until we engaged in a long passionate kiss. After the initial spark, I did feel a bit awkward and she could tell I was uncomfortable, so we stopped and she said, let's go. We went to a small local restaurant and had a nice dinner, made small talk about work, and our kids. We lightly discussed our situation. We couldn't get into it deeply because other patrons were closed by her table. She expressed regret for what she has done and apologized again for her. She said she doesn't know where it will leave us but she will continue to try. And my rental place was her wake-up call to reevaluate her life and to decide what she really wants from it. She told me the affair was just a fantasy and it's over for good. She told me she is very relieved I have decided to stay home through the holidays and she wants me to stay longer. She scared that after the new year, I will up and move out which will divide us further and make it very difficult if not impossible to work on our relationship. We finished dinner and went to the local bowling alley. Unfortunately, it was league night and no lanes were available. She suggested another alley in a town close by about a 20-minute drive. So we drove there and they had lanes available. We only had time to bowl two games before we needed to leave to get back home to let the babysitter go, but it was fun and lighthearted. We joked around a bit and talked about random things. She complimented me on the sweater I was wearing saying I look very handsome and I look good in burgundy. She said it was a good day for the whole family, but the morning started off with a lot of emotion from my wife. The kids were up and about we were just lying in bed awake enjoying the moment of peace and quiet. She was facing away from me. I reached over and put my hand on her shoulder. She put her hand over mine. I have missed the contact. The light touches the affirmation that we are thinking about each other. She rolled over toward me, buried her head in my chest and began sobbing heavily, I just held her tightly rubbing her back softly between sobs, when she could catch her breath, she tells me she feels extremely ashamed of what she's done and how much she's hurt me and affected our family, she tells me she's sorry for losing herself in a fantasy, she tells me I am what she wants, and she realizes that now, I've never seen this level of reflection of what she's done and expression of sorrow and remorse from her in years past when attempting to our it felt genuine to me. After a while, she calmed down and we got up to start her day. The tension that had been hanging in the was gone and everyone seemed to be open and receptive to each other. It was like a huge weight had been lifted off our family and we could breathe again. Wife had a cleaning job, so I took daughters to a horse riding lesson. A friend of hers from school was there finishing her lesson so the teacher let them ride together. It was fun watching the two girls practice and have a little competitiveness between them. Late afternoon, wife and I took the girls to Toys R Us to look around and work on their Christmas lists. Boy, were they busy writing? They each have a letter-sized page full of items. This may be their last year of believing in Santa, so it's fun to watch them preparing for the season and getting excited. Sunday was we call a stay-at-home day where we have nowhere to go no errands to run, we just stay around the house and relax as much as possible. Sometimes the girls pop in a DVD and we watch a movie together all crammed into our king-size bed. Not this time though, the girls were doing their own things while the wife cleaned the house and I worked on the yard, leaves, and storm-damaged cleanup. Wife cooked a delicious supper for us all. Overall, 
It was a relaxing day and nice to simply be around home. At bedtime, I was able to ask the wife about being pregnant. She said, no. She's not pregnant. I said, what about the mysperiods? She said she's pretty sure she got a light one after thinking about more, and she recently switched pills because the one she she was taking were not controlling the cycles like the doctor wanted. Plus, she attributes all the stress she's been under to affecting her cycles. Like I said before, she doesn't exhibit any stress in her voice or body language that tells me she's either hiding something or concerned about pregnancy. So where am I with all this? That is a very good question. 1. I have been struggling with internally for the past week or more. I need to get my head straight and choose a path. I have two looming deadlines that will be affected by what I choose. I have to decide whether to set up a health spending account for the family for next year by 20th. If I separated, I wasn't going to because I would need the extra money for expenses and would have to pay out of pocket as we go. We have our second custody conference on the 21st where the judge is expecting a resolution from us. Yeah. Right? Why feels that if I agree to R and we're working on us? then we don't need to decide custody. She feels that if I had custody, I could move out at any time. I told her I would not move out on a whim only if we decided our rebuilding wasn't working out. I hate having this feeling that she might be doing all this to derail the custody claim. I'm scared from previous times trying to work things out with her, although this time her efforts appear the sincerest I've ever gotten from her. It's just this nagging feeling in the back of my mind that I can't shake off. As some posters have said, it appears she is or has come to understand the reality of all this and what is going to happen when I move out and on with my life. I've shown her I am capable of pulling the trigger and doing it. She knows this is the very last time she might get a chance to make it work, and she's begging for it. I still have a couple of days to contemplate this whole situation, but I'm leaning toward a full-blown effort at this point. I mean, this is like the last breath of our marriage and we better take it in deep and hold it for as long as possible or it will come to an end. We talked a lot last night and this morning about the custody issue. We do have a much better understanding of each other, but no solution. She's afraid to settle with a custody agreement for fear. I will immediately pack up and leave. She says it feels to her like she's giving up her kids. I've told her that is not my intention but she's still rightfully scared of that happening given that I have my rental place ready to move into. I am afraid she's not being sincere in her efforts and words and is only doing this to keep me at home and postpone any custody arrangement. She says that is not what she's doing but can understand why I don't trust her. We both don't trust each other and cannot overcome our individual fears. That leaves us deadlocked without a clear path. So in my opinion, one of us has to take a leap of faith and commit without having something tangible to hold on to. I can't explain how difficult that would be for me. It's a mental block right now that I can't seem to find a way over or around. At this point, I don't know what else to do. I've pressed the issue as far as I can verbally. I mean, I have been almost relentless with my position constantly going back to her reopen the discussion again and again over these past weeks. The way I look at it I simply request a continuance of the conference for 90 and throw myself into repairing our marriage during that time. I still have one card in hand, my rental place, which is ready to go for the most part. And she full well knows that the thought of losing me, her kids, her way of life, and the future scares her out of her. If things don't work out over the next three months, all I would need to do is reschedule the conference and we just pick it up right where we left off today. Within one to two months, the hearing would be over and a ruling finalized no different than if I continue forward on Monday. I still feel the desire. Experienced fear before, but the wife was in the fog of the affair and not thinking rationally. This whole deal of me filing for divorce filing for custody, getting my own place, and furnishing it has really hit home with her and shaken her up. She has finally begun to see the reality of it and doesn't like what she sees. The kids are my primary concern in all of this, and I weigh the concern with every thought or decision I need to make. I spoke with my attorney around lunchtime and told him about recent developments. He felt there was nothing wrong with requesting a continuance and that doing so would not affect my standing in any way. He did suggest rather than setting an exact timetable like 90 days that 
we do what is called in legal terms of continuance to the call. It simply puts the custody matter in a holding pattern on the shelf so to speak until which time I make the call to continue. That way, if the wife does something stupid in two weeks, I just call in and restart everything rather than having to wait for the 90 days to expire. And if she is genuine about her intentions and we are working through this and things are going well for us then the custody claim lies dormant. So far, she has agreed to provide all email addresses and passwords she has agreed to not lock her phone and let me look at it anytime I want to. She has agreed to provide access to her cell phone account. This was all from her on her own. Obviously, there is much more that I would need for peace of mind. I have not laid out my needs in detail yet because I was trying to get through the custody conferences and settle that issue first. If she meets my custody conditions that would give me a good signal that she is sincere about her intentions, then I was planning on putting all the detailed requirements for reconciliation in front of her. After that, it's up to her to come through. Where I leave in the custody matter is on hold for the time being. I made a motion with the judge to continue it to the call, which simply means the matter is set aside until such time as I call to restart it and acquire a court date. So the custody claim is still in effect and in the court system. It's just been put on hold until I see how things go with my wife. I can't explain the feeling of relief I have not having this issue hanging over my head all the time. Also, on another good note, wife is not pregnant. She is in the middle of a full-blown heavy period typical of what she used to get before the stress of me filing for divorce and custody hammered her physically and emotionally. So that major issue is resolved. Me, the wife, and two girls went up to her mom's house overnight for Thanksgiving. We had a good time overall. I was okay too. I was not uncomfortable around her family and actually it felt good to be back into a normal mode of interact with them. Wife has a large family, and I found that I'm missing them. Wife told me several times she was happy that I decided to go with her and the girls. I still have the task of writing up all my requirements for reconciliation and giving it to the wife. I was waiting until after Thanksgiving so as not to introduce any drama into what is supposed to be a happy and thankful time. I'm going to try and get this to her this weekend, and then we'll see what happens. Things are going slow so far. My heart just isn't into it with her. I've told her so because she's been asking me what's wrong. I'm distant and detached. I'm actually in the middle of writing up my specific requirements for reconciliation. It's a one-page bullet point list of what I need for true reconciliation. It'll probably blow her mind when she sees it because she is of the mind that she's doing everything possible to prove herself to me. She is nice and pleasant, and we are getting along daily. There's just no connection or intimacy between us, mainly due to my lack of feelings toward her. I'm afraid to open my heart up again and so far haven't found the inner strength to let go of the anger and bitterness. On a better note, we just decorated the house inside and out for Christmas last weekend. Our girls were really into it and had a lot of fun doing it. Also, the four of us just went to my family's Christmas party on Saturday. She totally avoided my parents, but got along fine with everyone else. Here's what I have terms required for reconciliation. These are the minimum acceptable requirements that I need to help rebuild our marriage over time. These will enable me to heal emotionally and will help to re-establish trust between us. No contact for life. Prepare a handwritten no contact letter. Letter content to be approved by both of us. The letter to be mailed by me sample letter enclosed. Do not attempt to make contact with the other person ever again for life. Immediately report any attempts by the other person to contact you. Total transparency provide a complete list of all email, Facebook, chat, etc., accounts, current and inactive, including login ID and passwords. This includes, but is not limited to, work, and Google Gmail accounts. Re-establish online cell phone account, provide login ID and password, open access to cell phone at all times, provide unlocked code, answer any and all questions about the affair truthfully and completely, get tested for SDD, have a full spectrum panel run and provide a copy of the results, ownership accountability, accept 100% responsibility for having an affair with no blame shifting toward me, 
Continue to show remorse and understanding of the emotional damage that has been inflicted on me, not only through words but with actions by meeting the terms outlined here. Individual counseling attend regular therapy sessions to better understand the basis for your destructive behavior to prevent it from happening again. Marriage counseling attend couples therapy sessions with a mutually agreed upon counselor update. I asked my wife for some time alone to talk with her last night. She accommodated, and we talked for about 15 minutes. I asked a couple of questions about her last and final encounter with the other person, just basic stuff because I didn't really want to hear the sordid details, just hearing her say the words confirming what I knew made me sick to my stomach. I had the shakes for about an hour afterward too. She told me she has not tried to contact him since the last time together in September and neither has he tried contacting her. She verbally confirmed she did get tested for STDs, but doesn't remember the exact dates. I knew of her appointments for the test because she had mentioned them back in the September time frame. My concern is she was tested before the final encounter. I told her to get me a copy of the results. I pray she was tested after the final time. Otherwise, I will require her to get tested again. I asked her if she still wants her marriage to work out. She said yes. I told her if she doesn't want it anymore, I'm more than ready to move out and move on with my life. She responded that she knows it all too well now given that I have filed for divorce and got my own place. I told her I may be a fool for doing this. Only time will tell, but I still love her and want to work our way through this together. I told her I have a list of absolute requirements that she must meet, plus there may be others that will come up as we go along. I gave her a paper copy of the terms plus a sample no contact letter that I pieced together from several I found on TAM and other sites so that it better suited our situation. She looked them over and told me she has no problem with any of them and that she has been offering some of these to me recently. I counter that she has only been verbally telling me, and I want to see some actions from her. Give me the list of accounts, give me the cell phone billing account, and log in. Just don't tell me I can have I told her she needs to initiate more from her side and be forthcoming with these things. I shouldn't have to drag them out of her. I don't know. Maybe my expectations are too high that she understands and knows exactly what to do to start repairing our marriage. She can't read minds any more than I can, so I spelled it all out in black and white on paper so there is no misunderstanding about what I want from her. Also, on another good note, she agreed to attend and we are looking into going to a local program in January. She was immediately to the idea and thought it would be beneficial for the time away together and to improve our communication and emotional connection. My wife called me at work while she was driving to work herself. She told me there's an envelope on the table with the info I asked for, so at lunch, I went home and looked at it. It was a one-page report from her SDD testing, nothing else and no HIV test. And as I suspected, expected, it was done at the end of August first month before her final encounter with the other person. She scribbled her Facebook and cell phone account login and password in the margin. This is not acceptable. I can't believe she would even provide it and think it was okay. She knows she saw him in September and she didn't provide her work or Gmail account info. I'm so tired of having to drag crap out of her. I will tell her tonight to get retested for STD with a comprehensive full panel. I reminded the wife yesterday that she needs to get retested for TD due to the timing of the first test and her meeting up with the other man afterward. She became defensive saying nothing she does is good enough and when will it be enough satisfy me. I feel that her outburst was unwarranted given that I made clear, concise requests, and writing for the things I needed from her, and she only met two of them halfway. She gave me the SDD test results, but as stated, she had re-exposed herself afterward voiding the results, that's her fault. Not my problem. Second, she gave me access to Facebook and her online cell phone account, but didn't provide her work or Gmail info, so I'll have asked her again for those and face another barrage of indignation. She keeps asking me what will be next after she does all the things on my list, then what will I ask for? I told her I can't think of anything at the moment, but there may be things that come up that I want to know about. That's part of the process of healing and reconciliation. It's typical of her to want things to just be over with. That's her personality type. 
None of this behavior is unexpected, it's exactly what I expected knowing how she reacts to these types of interactions between us. Some days, I'm simply tired and emotionally worn down to the point where these incidents make it hard to stay focused and hopeful. She texted me in the afternoon to tell me she made a doctor's appointment for Wednesday to get retested. At least she followed through, but only after giving me a piece of her mind. I did thank her for setting up the appointment to show my appreciation. Oh, well, one day at a time, I guess. Quick update, I've been very busy with the holidays and my girls, and, yes, my wife too. I had the last two weeks off from work and spent a lot of time with the family doing Christmas stuff shopping, wrapping, decorating, all the family parties, and such it was a very wonderful time. Imagine that our girls had one of, if not the best Christmas ever. Let's see now what has transpired on the reconciliation front. Wife gave me the last of her email account logins for work and Gmail. She went and got tested again for STD's full panel and gave me the results two days before Christmas. Oh, and we have consummated our recommitment to the marriage several times. After further consideration, she has agreed to write the no contact letter. It took her a while to grasp the idea that the letter was more for me and not a message to the other man per SE. She didn't see the point in a letter since he has not attempted contacting her for months, and she has no plans to. Say and executing it was just another way for her to express her recommitment to our marriage. Last night, we were lying in bed, snuggling, and talking about how nice the holiday was for us. She firmly grabbed my hand, looked into my eyes, and said, I'm truly sorry for hurting you so badly. I replied it's a new year and a fresh start. Let's focus on each other more intently than ever and don't sweat the trivial stuff that may come up over the holiday. I told her we must find ways to spend more time together each week. We have the same issues other families have with school, work, activities, chores, and all, but we really slacked off on any quality time together over the past few years. We always put our kids' needs first, and that's not the best remedy for a healthy marriage. There needs to be a better balance going forward. I'm still at home with the wife and kids. I asked the realtor to put my rental place back on the market. I did this to try and ease our financial situation as we try to pay for a second household, lawyer fees, credit card debt, and money I borrowed from my parents to get set up on my own. We've had some unexpected home and auto repairs. It's a bad time of year, middle of winter, to find another renter so I'll probably be stuck paying rent until the lease runs out in June. Wife and I are getting along fine no arguments or issues. I've checked on her a few times, email, and phone records, and nothing appears to be going on. Micah tells me nothing is going on too. She had her first restart of individual counseling yesterday and set up several more appointments. She also signed release forms for the first time in years to allow her to share info with mine. I think that is a positive sign. In the past, she has been completely secretive about what goes on in her sessions. My birthday is this Friday, and she has planned a family getaway for three days. She won't tell me what it is. She wants it to be a big surprise. All I know is I had to take two vacation days and we have to drive wherever we are going. I'm looking forward to it. My only complaint about reconciliation is I don't feel connected with her. We seem to be just going through the motions of daily life. I want to feel a closer intimate connection with her. I'll admit I haven't been trying very hard. I need to do more frequent touching and cuddling, and we definitely need to find more time for making love. Life is hard with two girls, work, homework, music lessons, activities, and household chores. We both usually fall into bed exhausted each night. I have been doing more listening and interacting in conversation with her as I feel this was something I was lacking in before her affair. So things are moving along slowly, but at least in the right direction. I forgot to mention we are watching more TV shows together. We used to just go in our separate rooms and watch whatever or even the same show sometimes. I even watch shows that only she likes just so I can snuggle with her on the couch or in bed. My comment that was the final update to the story maybe they lived happily ever after, 
maybe not. Who knows, for those who don't like reconciliation stories, I only know the ending to these near the end of making these videos. At the end of the day, you decide who is around you in your life, including friends and partners. I think if a one-time thing is a mistake, but if it's a second-time thing, it's called a behavior. You agree a short ending to this long series going to take a quick nap and get back to another story for you guys. Southern Bell and stay safe in your relationships.